What's up, Zeb? Not much, Coach Green. How are you doing today? Doing well, doing well. How's everything in Ohio? Oh, man, I'll tell you what. Uh, Chagrin Falls, and I live in Auburn Township, which is like the um, – it is uh we our mailing address is chagrin falls and chagrin falls right. is like this real affluent town that yeah. we live about seven miles east of and it's it's been a really interesting last couple of days and our uh where we live out in auburn township and then the chagrin falls area into orange and the um like geauga cuyahoga county line is like kind of western pa-ish i guess sure yeah Old mm-hmm. hills and stuff it's it's not quite where you are where you got mountains we got some hills, you know what I mean? It's a border town, border town, right? Yeah, we're, we're 40 miles from, you know, Sharon, right? Yeah. Are so, you tired of the much to my chagrin jokes yet? Do they, do they, do they get out that way? or are No, people- because we're, right. we're, Auburn, we're Auburn Township. And the okay. thing is, like, um, it was funny. My principal, my boss, Rich Fromo, was like, Miller, stop telling people you live in Chagrin Falls because you're going to find out real quick it's Auburn Township and he dude these people are like crazy about being Auburn Township they're okay. crazy All right. yeah, they're madness hey are you going to I'm say just... hi to coach green real quick what's up Ferdinand what you got it's what we got Ferdy. Bird. Bird. Bird, man, he, he's he, out man uh, he's he out got his wings clipped though for uh yeah. he was uh he was doing NASCAR with his brother on the four-wheeler Nice, nice. Robin's race Can I tell you right now, like, if I drove by Chagrin Falls, every time I saw a sign, I would say much to my chagrin every single time. And whichever of my children that was in the car with me would want to kill me. <laughs> um, no question about it. That's uh, living that dad humor. So we're going to flip the script tonight, man. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Um, I think you have been referred to uh, several times as perhaps the uh, – the best interviewer in the sport of wrestling. Um, So we're going to turn it over uh, and uh, I'm going to come at you with some questions uh, here in this uh, adventure that we're going on together, whatever we're calling it. Right. Um, Yeah, man. We got to figure that out. We got to figure that out right now. It's the, the long form form podcast. If we actually have any listeners, maybe they can, uh, maybe they can suggest some, some let them pick the name right like like title, the pick the name for us all right your name so, pick or whatever right yeah i'm excited about it so you go you want indians again tonight right i got the i, I listened to stutzman this morning so i'm going ub bulls um, hey did, did you get some insight into john stutzman and why he recruits and how he recruits and how he is as a person today? <laughs> yes that's one of my favorites i've known him for a long time uh so uh Nothing new in that interview for me, but it's like listening to your favorite album, right? Um, you know, you just put it on, and even if you haven't listened to it in a while, it's like having a conversation with an old friend. So uh, I always, I always listen to, love listening to him talk and listening to the stories. Yeah, John is John's an, a unique character. I like to call him Nutsman, man. Yeah, he is nuts. Yeah. He's earned <laughs> that. He, he's he's earned that name for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. All right, so. Let's talk Zeb. Let's talk Zeb Miller tonight, okay? Um, so when did you become a wrestling junkie? Take us a little bit through your journey with this sport. Everyone hears the interviews, hears you yelling things like cement lugger strength and going crazy on the microphone. Uh, let's, let's, let's let the people hear a little bit more about your story, where it started, how you got into it, and then we're just going to try to cover everything that we can tonight. Okay, I'm the youngest of five kids. Um, my, I have oldest brother, Ferd, my kid's Ferd, my grandpa's Ferd, my great-grandpa's Ferd. So that's the gotcha. whole Ferd name. But my Love brother, Ferd, is – and that's Ian Miller's dad, Ferd. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother, Ferd, a, was a two-time state champ for Oak Harbor High School um, in Oak Harbor, from Oak Harbor, Ohio, the um, yep. Northwest Ohio, uh, little school in Northwest Ohio. And then um, my brother, Chad – so Ferd's 10 years older than me. Chad's eight years older than me. I got a sister who's seven years older than me, Heather. And then uh, my brother Tate is two years older than me. All three of my brothers were state champs at uh, Oak Harbor. Ian yep. was a state champ at Oak Harbor. And then, um, geez, oh, Pete's, uh, my nephew Wyatt is going to be a senior. I think he would have had a pretty good shot at being a cha- uh, state champ for nice. Oak Harbor this year, but he's back next year. Got one more year to do it then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then I was fifth. I was fifth in the state once 
uh, you know, as the youngest kid, man, that, that was a tough, uh, that's a tough, you know, pill to swallow. And you learn a lot as a, you know, 17, 18 year old that nothing is just like guaranteed for you. Nothing, no one's going to give you anything. That's a yeah. tough thing to learn as a, you know, 17, 18 year old. But um, it's a really valuable thing to learn as a young person. Um, but yeah, like, so obviously you can see that. Um, and I had uncles that wrestled. My dad wrestled. Um, they actually went to Clay High School, where Matt Stencil's from. Sure, so, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. So, so Clay, I have a cousin, Buck. My cousin Buck was a two-time state placer at Clay. So Clay High School is like where my mom and dad graduated from, and all my aunts and uncles. Yeah. But Clay High School is, is where the Millers started wrestling. And then um, crazy stuff happened. Um, my brother Ferd made the state tournament for Genoa. And these are my earliest yeah. memories. So, like, you mm – -hmm. so, Ferd made the state tournament for Genoa as a sophomore. Sophomore, yeah. And then um, the coach – it was real weird. The coach was, like, this real nice guy. Yeah. And I think that they were, like, partying in a hotel room or something. Oh, my yeah. dad walked in. Ferd went, like, one and out, you know, one and out, two and skidoo, whatever it was in those days. And I think, <laughs> like, him and the coach were drinking beer. Oh, uh, different, so, different era, man, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, 1985, right? We're talking 1985. Sure. Yeah. The guy's since passed away, but I think the guy was a good guy, but kind of blurred that line that, you know, in, in professionalism that you just can't blur, right, Scott? Yeah, the 80s are something you read about in the history books now, man. Like, 70s and 80s, it's like, it's like crazy yeah. when you watch, like, the Dazed and Confused movie and how they're drinking sure. beer and, you know, smoking pot at the school and, it's, and the cops tell them to go home, and it's, it's just not like that anymore, man. It's, just, no. it's, it's a different no. era. So, so we moved across the street to um, – Oak Harbor. We literally moved yeah. directly across the street. I remember moving and I walked next to a truck and was holding stuff onto it. That was how we moved. Yeah. No transfer uh, rules then? You didn't get jammed up with a, with a transfer committee or anything like that? No. Okay. So what happened actually was they were um, my dad, my brother Ferd, and my brother Chad lived down the road a quarter mile with this guy named Kyle Clore. Okay. So Kyle Clore lived in the Oak Harbor district. Oak Harbor and Genoa have a, a border, right? It's Nissan sure. Road. We live on Nissan Road. So we we had an old farmhouse. Dad. And hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm going to start a fire down there. We'll start a fire down there once I'm done telling this story. Right. Okay. Okay. Say hi to Coach. Uh, hi. What's Here. up? S'mores? You getting s'mores tonight? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yep. All right. Well, a lot of summer night if it doesn't end with s'mores. Yep. See ya. Bye. Yeah. Tommy, you give him one. There's a butterfly. Yep. All right, Tommy. You ready for some s'mores? Yeah, yeah. We need s'mores to the potty in here. Nothing. We need a bunch of butterflies. Butterflies, yep. All right. Butterflies. I'm telling Coach a story. I'll be down, all right? Yep. Yep. Thanks. Okay. He's ready. He so, wants to join the podcast team. He does. So, um, he he um, they lived down the road with this guy named Kyle Clore. Dude, this is a real story. I'm not making this up. Mm -hmm. Kyle Clore was, I want to say, a pipe fitter. Okay. So I come from my dad's an iron worker. My papa heard uh -huh. my dad's dad. He was an iron worker, and then he served in all major battlefronts in World War II. So I came from like just super blue collar, hard nosed people. All my uncles, three of my uncles were pipe fitters. Right. And all my mom's brothers, my uncles on my mom's, they're auto workers that work and made the Jeep Wrangler in Toledo. So it's like just as blue collar as it gets, right? Mouth breathers. Blue collar, mouth Ohio. Breathers. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. I so, hear you. No, my dad, my dad worked on the railroad. So I hear you. There you go, man. So you, you get yeah. it. But, um, so my dad wanted to not have Chad and Ferd go to Genoa. Uh -huh. with the incident with the coach, right? So they moved down the road a quarter of a mile with this guy named Kyle Clure. Mm -hmm. Kyle Clure, I want to say, was a pipe fitter, okay? So he was a fitter. He was a boilermaker or a fitter. But long story short, Kyle Clure had 50 dogs. Kyle Clure had two black bears. And two Kyle, black bears. Remember, he had a pet fox. My brother Tate yeah. and I used to rustle the bear. We so Palmer's not the only Ohio kid who was wrestling bears? No, no. My brother Tate and I used to wrestle like the Cubs. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. And you beat the, we never wrestled like the big one, dude. Like, right, right. A Remember that Lance Palmer video? Remember that? When, yeah, that I think they had it muzzled and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Kyle Clure guy was a drunk hillbilly. Uh oh. <laughs> I think he, I think he, he's dead. I mean, he passed away. Um, you know, this guy had some, some serious, I want to say probably methamphetamine problems, but sure. it, it, it's wild that none of us, none of the five of us in my family, it's a wild that none of us are like felons or drug addicts because my dad had like all these blue collar people around and he was always about giving the underdog a chance. My dad was always about giving oh, old Bobo or old slick Jimmy or Dr. Rick or all these like people that would come around our house. And most of them were probably felons, Scott. I don't know. I wasn't doing fingerprinting yeah. back in the day, but we're talking about, you know, the dregs of society and my dad would, you know, people who'd been in prison and he would like help these people out, let us, let them stay with us, get them into the iron workers. And, and, and it was wild, man. It was wild growing up. So they lived down the road with Kyle Clure in 1986. Okay. okay. Yeah. Kyle Clure would have standoffs with the police. He would get drunk, fire his gun in the air. The police oh, would, this is real. I'm not making this up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. He pulled a gun on and uh, put a gun to Eric Burnett's head. Wow. Yes. Eric what? Burnett pulled up and he, and he put a gun in his face. What? Yeah, real man. Real. My dad. So my dad and my two brothers lived with him. Well then obviously they, you know, you see the handwriting on the wall. This guy's a maniac. Yeah. So Ferd won the state title that year. He won in 1986. Ferd won the state title for Oak Harbor. Okay. Living in that environment every day. Living so, in that environment. And you know, and I think, done. Yeah, yeah, right. He got it done. But, like, you know, it's out in the country. They live pretty um, – they're real hard workers. They're hard-nosed yeah. people. So, I think a lot of it was just, like, almost like how it was. Mm -hmm. You did it. I think he had a ton of ability. You know, my brother Ferd was – he was a left-handed guy. He was a 215-pound guy in the football season. He was first team All-State in football and a two-time state champ in wrestling. And then – I remember riding next to Ferd when he would ride run at night, and yeah. I couldn't keep up with him on my bike. Nice. So he ran. You're how old at this point? How old are you at this point? Ten years old, and, and yeah. eight, yeah. eight, nine, ten years old, and I, I can't keep up with this guy on a bicycle. Yeah. So, so you're ten, and you're seeing that, and it's like just kind of ingraining it in you, right? It's yeah. fostering the love for the sport, it was right? Crazy, there. Yeah. yeah. So he um he he ran a sub five minute mile. Okay. okay. Well, and I, you know, I know, I know that Scott, because, you know, I ran track, I qualified, um, in, uh, qualified in relays, uh, for the state meet in Ohio in division two qualified, uh, in the individual 1600 meter. And I ran a four minute, 28 second, 1600 meters. Wow. So I know that because I would train and I was like, man, he was moving. Yeah. He was moving and he was, and he was a 215, 220 pound guy moving like that. That's scary coming down the track that fast. Right. Yeah, and, but he never ran track. He never yeah. ran track. That was oh, how he trained yeah. and cut his weight. Yeah. But, you know, I was a – when I qualified one of the times um, for the state meet, I was about 190 pounds. Mm -hmm. So I was a 190-pounder, and if you ever see the state meet of me running, if I could find that video. Yeah. You got this guy that looks like he's pulling a – you got a line. I was a linebacker. On, I didn't right. run cross country. So you got a linebacker running against a bunch of – you know, 130, 140 pound kids who are 5'8 to 5'10, 5'11. <laughs> and you got a yeah. 6 foot 190 pound linebacker running in the same event. It, just, it was very odd, not a place, man. It, did, it didn't, and then I didn't have a great meet. I ran like a 434 at the state meet, which was pretty garbage. But so you're getting to states in two different sports in Ohio, huh? Yeah. And then we were, we were, uh, we went deep. Pretty good, at, pretty good at football, too. We went deep in the playoffs in football, too. Mm hmm. So we were, we were, O'Carver was really good. O'Carver yeah. was really good at like everything. And then we had some other real blue collar towns um, where they make Whirlpool and Kenmore washers and dryers. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. called it's Clyde, Ohio. Clyde, yep. Mm -hmm. Clyde was a big rival of ours and we beat them one year in football. We beat them. And then two weeks later in the playoffs, three weeks later in the playoffs, they beat us and they ended up winning the state that year. They were 13 and one. We beat them the last game of the season to get in the playoffs and, you know, it's just a lot of back and forth with Clyde and O'Carver. And, you know, the, it's a pretty good sports league over there. It's called the Sandusky That's got to be like the heyday of that small town high school athletics, right? Yep. Like, yep. like exactly. where, it, where it kind of means everything to the yep. town. 
Um, That's it, man. Fight Ohio. Ohio. They won it this year. They hey, yeah, did they, really? they, they made the state playoffs at six and four, and okay. and ran the table and went eleven and four and, and wow. beat a fourteen and zero team in the finals. Yeah, I, I just remember the eighties. Like, the, you, if you weren't going to the football game on Friday night, and this is like upstate New York for me, yeah. like everyone in the town was there, right? And if you went afterwards, we had like a American Legion and a McDonald's in our town, and all the kids were at the McDonald's, and all the adults were at the American Legion, right? Yeah, uh, and, it's crazy. And that because that's how Harvard was, was, and that's how Clyde is. You know what I mean? Small town, yeah. not a lot going on. Um, yeah. You know, and and the thing about it, what's crazy about um, Clyde and O'Carver is. They have one form of industry, right? Mm-hmm. So Clyde has Whirlpool, which yeah. is washers, dryers. I think that may do may do dishwashers. I think that they can uh, retrofit things to change and yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And competitive, right? Um, Industries and, had to, to evolve, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and that's where all those people. That's where all those people work, right? So if yeah. you're in O'Carver, where I'm from, we have a nuclear power plant called Davis Bassey. Oh boy. So Davis Bessie, it's still operational. Still mm-hmm. operational. It's on Lake Erie in Ottawa County. I'm from Ottawa County. It's a peninsula that goes out into, um, you know, it's a peninsula that goes out into the Sandusky Bay on one side and then Lake Erie on the other side. And there's not a lot going on in Ottawa County, right? There's a, there's a, 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 a it used to be a fishing town. Now it's like kind of a vacation town, Port Clinton, Ohio. There's just not a ton going on there, Scott. When you go there, you're like, no, I hear you. Not a lot going on, you know. That's why sports mean, mean, mean so much to those towns. Right? I grew up pretty much on Lake Erie, too, you know, Buffalo, New York. So, you know, that was, uh, I always say Buffalo, Cleveland, same, same, same city, same lake for the most part. And, and, yeah, it's definitely a big part of your high school experience. Sounds like it was for you, too. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, George Bergman is our coach. He's, he is Wyatt's coach right now and my nephew Owen's coach. Oh, really? He yeah. coached. He coached. He sat in the chair for all of my brother's state titles, coached me, sat, yeah. sat in the chair for Ian's, all of Ian's state finals and Ian's. Mm-hmm. And then his nephew is J.D. Bergman. Yep. And there are – Some big um, Ohio names right there, right? Yeah. And it, so George Bergman is one of 14 kids. Wow. Um, there's eight boys, six girls. JD's dad, Jim Bergman, is the only one of those guys that was a state champ. And I remember going and watching dual meets at Cardinal Stritch High School. Most of the Bergmans wrestled at Cardinal Stritch. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then I think one of the girls, one of the Bergman girls, yeah. within the last 15 years, won the shot put for a Cardinal <laughs> Stritch. And now Cardinal yeah. Stritch didn't even have wrestling. So I, look, my early memories are this. Okay, So yeah. everything obviously bit, w- w- revolved around going and watching Ferd and Chad. Yep. And you're in between them. Are you 88 grad? 88, yeah. Yeah, yeah so Chad and Ferd are 87, 89. Gotcha. Heather's yeah. 90. Heather's a 90 grad, my sister Heather. So everything revolved around going and watching Ferd and Chad wrestle, and then Heather would play girls basketball and softball, and we would go watch all this stuff because, like, there's nothing to do. It's a small town. Yeah. That's I mean, it, man. You might have a movie theater. Like, Got to get to, where, gotta get to see some sports. Bit. Yeah. 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 That's the deal. And I remember the big deal with my dad was, it's funny. He was like, Hey, you're either going to work or you're going to play sports. Yep. So of course, in my mind, I'm like, I don't want to work. You know, he got <laughs> back 40. He farmed yeah. for a while. And then, um, he still, he runs the farmland out now. Um, and I was like, dude, I'm playing three sports. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not working. I'm not getting a job. And then in the summer when you weren't working, I had to work for Bergman's. Yeah. Bergman's no, it's a different, different reality. Now, it still exists a little bit. Though. I remember being at Binghamton and uh, recruiting kids from, from some small towns and from some areas and talking to them on the phone. I remember calling a guidance counselor, asking for the kids' SAT scores, and the guidance counselor says, well, he's not going to be a doctor or a lawyer. We generally don't tell them to take the SAT and I was like really like in the in the 2000s but back in the 80s man like my high school probably 40 percent of the kids went into the military after high school right so it's yeah. uh it's it's different reality now than than what we're dealing with yeah and um, all right so you, oh go ahead yeah so then we would go to the world cup all the time too uh-huh. world cup we went to all I went to the world cups as, as I was watching yeah. I watched Mark Schultz lose. I watched I watched John yeah. Smith lose in Savage Hall in Toledo. 
and we went I've, t- I've brought this story up to him before in an interview and talked to him and him oh, and his no. brother were screaming at each other i'm effing each other and i handed him an ohio state osu buckeyes hat it was this red uh-huh. back hat and i'm like and he's like wrong osu <laughs> but, he still, but he still signed it and he was just like it was like the, the, the dude maybe a dude from it was either russian or a dude from belarus yeah. beat him, beats him and he and he lost his mind and i remember talking to him about it and i was like he didn't tell us to buzz off he didn't tell us to go kick rocks and and right. the dude he signed all our autographs he Snap signed right wrong it, right? osu yeah. wrong osu and you know what man that that's a huge memory and i remember he was super he was pissed dude he was yeah. so mad right and i i don't even know if it was it might have even been an exhibition or i know those are dual meets most generally right obviously yeah no usually but, yeah but maybe not as 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 much emphasis put on i mean obviously for him it was but yeah those are you know promote the sport exhibition kind of things yeah. but it, it, it might have been but he you never want to lose yeah <laughs> no but that guy don't want to lose on anything he don't want to lose the tiddlywinks he don't want to lose it. He's Michael Jordan throwing quarters against the wall. He don't want to lose. First year, first year, second year at Binghamton, we're wrestling them. And Pat obviously went to OSU. And, uh, you know, we're like, man, we're going to get skunked here. You know, we're going to get shut out. But we got to have, you know, the OSUs on our schedule um, to wrestle them. And so uh, we won one match. I don't remember. Kyle Freed, if you remember that name, um, was one of our qualifiers early on. And John Smith was so angry with the kid that lost to the Binghamton kid. And we were just like sitting there watching. He's coming up to Matt. He's like, son, do you know a drag? Do you know a drag? And he's like, Demi-. and, and like, you know, he beat us like 40 to, to three, but he was so angry that that one kid had lost. So I know that mentality. I've seen it firsthand with him, but you're right. Like right afterwards, he's asking Pat about his family and you know, everything like that. So he knows he's got that on off switch, that true professional. Yeah, man. Yeah. He was cool. I couldn't believe it. And, and, yeah. and, but like, and he's always real cool to talk to. Like, John Smith don't owe me nothing, dude. He don't have to give yeah. me interviews. He don't right. have to talk to me genuinely like yeah. he does. Yeah. I just appreciate the guy. But, and then there's some people who don't have, they have a distaste for him or whatever. But like, as a kid, yeah. I remember that. The dude lost yeah. and he still signed all our hats, even the wrong OSU. Stays with you. Stays with you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so you're growing up in wrestling rich country. You got it all ingrained in you, and then it's time for you to, uh, to, to move on to college. So tell us about that transition. Tell us a little bit about Zeb Miller's college days, all, all the PG stuff uh, that, that, that you can say on the air here. <laughs> okay. Um, Joel Greenlee got me to verbally commit to Ohio University. He was interim head coach for Huska. And give me years here. Give me years. 97, 98. 97. We went and took a visit, 97. I qualified for the state tournament as a sophomore. And I lost to my neighbor who lives down the road who just drove by and honked, John Worvey. John Mm -hmm. Worvey, the district I live in now, put Mm -hmm. me out of state tournament. John John Worvey from Kenston put me out of state tournament. I did not have a junior year of high school um, wrestling. I tore my ECL, MCL, LCL. Ouch. Everything but my PCL, okay. And um, at my junior year of high school, I tore every ligament in my knee and all, and both medial and lateral meniscus. Wrestling practice, football, like what football. Yeah. We were skunking the the neighbor uh, neighboring school just to the east of us, Port Clinton. We were beating them fifty something to nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, my best friend, I was best man at his wedding. One of my best friends, Pat Kenya, state placer in wrestling, great guy. He was snapping. We would do all the long snapping together. Um, he was on the fritz that day. He was having a bad day against, you know, our worst team. And he misfired a couple extra point snaps. So, they're like, Miller, get in there. And I went in there, and two guys jumped on my back. Oh. And then my leg locked – both legs locked out, and a guy submarined me, and, and my knee opened up uh, 45 degrees. So, my, my femur stayed like this. Yeah. My knee opened up that far, and I heard all, the, all this popping and crunching. And That's it, no good. It was pretty terrible, man. But, yeah. So, at that point, don't have a junior year. Junior year is obviously a huge year for um, yeah. recruiting. And then uh, going into my senior year, I was the number one ranked guy. And then at the state tournament, I got beat up real bad with a, a dude was hitting me with that elbow suck barrel roll dump deal. Okay. Caught me on yeah. my back twice with that, and I just couldn't come back and get really into the match. Um, until the third period, but it was too late, right? So I lose in the sure. semifinals, 
lost again and ended up taking fifth as a senior. And then my mom and dad were like, hey, you can go to Kent State. Yeah. You want to go to OU, you're on your own. You go to Kent State, we'll help you move your stuff. Um, you know, it was half the price, I want to say, at the time. Sure, yeah. And um, so I went into Frank Romano's office. He was the Notre Dame college coach when they won a couple NCAA team titles. He was the coach, and him and Andresi were in the office, and I went in, and I was like, hey. I, want, I remember this was like August. I was like, hey, I wanna, I'm coming to school here. I want to be on the wrestling team. And he's like, well, you can try out. I was like, oh, you know, I wrestled in high school. I committed to Ohio U. And they're like, yeah, you can try and walk on. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to the meetings. And, like, some of the guys that are still my best friends today, man, they were all at the meeting. And it was, like, the intro student – introduction to student-athlete meeting. And I, I went, and I remember seeing all these guys. It was like, it's great to think about it, right? And I remember um, my buddy Joe Charlton. We were neighbors. I just hang out with him and his kid, my kids. Great guy. And I remember seeing him, and he had an older brother named Ricky, and they're PA, both PA State placers from Fort LaBeouf. Yeah. Great, great freaking guys. I was in Joe's wedding. But um, I remember seeing him, and the older one, Ricky, looked younger than Joe, and Ricky's four years older than Joe. And I remember seeing him being like, wait, which one's the older one? Mm -hmm. and Joe, <laughs> Joe was four years younger, but he looked older because he had a – he had a real thick beard, and Ricky was baby-faced. And uh, another one of my teammates was uh, this guy, Nick Namath. Nick Namath, uh, he walked on, too. Yeah, okay. So Nick Namath, um, he won the MAC three times. Well, he's Dolph Ziggler now in the WWE. Yeah. So it's funny because he's working right now with this dude who was a Greco stud from Wisconsin. Oh, God, what was his name? Heavyweight. Nico Bajavic, I want to say it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, okay. He's, he's working him with him in the – Him and Nico are working right now. Him and Nico are uh, – however they're writing it, they're uh, fighting with no crowd now, right? Yeah, yeah. He's working with Nico right now. Okay. So him and Nico – and Nico's uh, probably 5'10", 330 pounds. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, Nico, I think you're right. Nico's yeah. a big hoss. So yeah. I think it's fire Nico. hydrant. Fire hydrant. Yeah, yeah, and I think Nico won Fargo a bunch in Greco. I think. I believe you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like twenty twenty nine, twenty ten. I want to say. Yep. Um, so I remember seeing him, and he had a, a backwards hat on, and I was like, "Hey, man, what's your name?" I remember like introducing myself. I didn't know any of these guys. These guys all yeah. got recruited. Mm -hmm. So I rolled in, and, and Andres like. He tells the story that this crazy kid walked into his office and was like, I want to be on your team. And so I walked on and eventually they, um, I worked real hard, man. I worked real hard. I crushed everybody in all the distance running okay. and, um, and being, you know, I was 210 pounds. Um, eventually Frank Romano was like, Hey Miller, we got some scholarship money. We're going to give it to you. And it was second. Right. Semester, actually. Yeah. Okay. So I, you know, I got to put, get on, you know, $1,500 with a scholarship by the second semester. So that, you know, that meant a lot to me, but I saw the process, you know what I mean? Scott, I saw the process. Russ Hellickson and mm -hmm. Jim Jordan were at my house recruiting. Yeah. Bird. Bird, my brother Bird went to Ohio state and Russell. Yeah. So you saw a bunch of guys go through it before with your, with your brother and stuff. Yeah. Saw all of it, you know, and my brother Chad was a, was a, a we call it a non-qualifier. In your era, it was called the Prop 48. Okay, yep. Um, he didn't have a high enough ACT score, so he had to go walk on at Ohio State and you know, do that red shirt year that year. Year in residency year, yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, I'd seen all that, and I knew what all those guys had gone through. I knew what all the recruited guys had gone through who were on a bunch of money, who were on, you know, three-quarters of a ride, half rides, and we came in with a big class. So um, from there – First off, greatest it was great. That's where I met yeah. my wife. My wife was on the volleyball team at Kent State, and um, she was a four-year starter. Had all the kills record at uh, Kent State. Had a bunch of weightlifting records um, for the volleyball team, and she was just you know super powerful, athletic person. It's awesome. Like a Kent person. State Kent State power couple story right here. There you go. And so my yeah. wife played volleyball. I wrestled, and then um, 
yeah, and we met my freshman year actually, and then didn't really date. You know, hung out. We actually lived together a year as like roommates. Okay. But never weren't dating. Weren't dating. Interesting. No, it was it was crazy. We we're friends. Always really good friends. Um, yeah. I actually moved her from Ann Arbor to um, Kent from Ann Arbor, and uh, one of my teammates' dad had a uh, had a uh, Jared Upper. He was a four time state champion in Ohio. Jared Upper's dad lent us a box truck, and we went up to. Uh, we went up to uh, Ann Arbor and picked up all their stuff. So I don't just remember stuff like that, man. But as far you're as not, you're not dating at that point when you're going up to Michigan, no, just a really good friend at that point. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. Like really, really good friend. Um, and um, we actually went our separate ways. And she taught at Orville High School, and I taught. Um, I still teach where I am now at a uh, Riverside. And then um, we circled back around. You know what I mean? She got out of a long relationship. Um, I wasn't in a relationship and we circled back around and took her out West with me and the rest is history, Scott, you know, we're married. Interesting how that happens, right? Yeah. Uh, And then, um, you know, as far as Kent state, man, I think I was 60. I won 60 matches. I was 60 and 58. I was a four year starter at 197 pounds. I wrestled in four Mac tournaments. I placed third and fourth in the Mac. Um, one year they took two guys out of the weight. Uh, Dan Bednar beat me in the semifinals. And yep. then Ed Bednar beat Brett Faustman of Central Michigan in the finals. Yeah. I lost the true second place match to Faustman. Faustman, yeah. Kind of he kind of kicked my ass. Okay. Well. It was like a five three match. I was actually it was actually way closer than the dual meet. The dual meet, I I, I could shoot you the dual meet. Kind of yeah. kicked my ass being like seven to three in the dual meet. Yeah. Um, but people don't eat, they hear five three ass kicking in there. They, uh, they haven't watched enough college college matches to know that that's really can be an ass kicking, right? But I was right there. I remember because I was in a yeah. position to take him down. Yeah. At the end, and I tore my uh, meniscus the match before for third and fourth. So right after third and fourth, Andresi made me wrestle for true second. I was the last person on the mat at the mm-hmm. mat tournament, and I wanted that was two thousand. And yeah. Andresi's like, "You're wrestling." Right. You're wrestling. And I was like, no, I can't. I don't want to. He's like, you're <laughs> effing wrestling. And I was like, and then, you know, I came, I came real close. Cause you know, he didn't want to be there. He just lost in the Mac final. Yeah, sure. Yeah. The guy who he beat, who he was seated higher than. And yeah. So those two guys went, I didn't go. Right. And it was, that was when the Mac had like 14 bids too. Yeah. It was It'd be interesting to see how it would go now with all that APR or the, the I would have qualified. Ball. I would have qualified. Would have qualified, qualified be, right? Yeah. Yeah, I beat yeah. six or seven guys that qualified that year. Yeah, yeah. That's how it goes, though, man. That's life. Yeah. That's so, like. So yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that that sixty and fifty eight. You get you got to be feeling good about that, right? Like, you know, you say it out loud, and you're like, eh, doesn't sound too imposing, <laughs> but man, you're over five hundred as a, a division one wrestler in a sport that doesn't have a lot of slots. It's got to be pretty gratifying, right? Uh, you know, never qualifying. That was like, I, I, like that bummed me out for like a long time. That yeah. bummed, it's like these guys who get beaten the round of twelve. My getting yeah. beaten round of twelve was losing the what's his name, the Central yeah. Michigan guy Faustman for that mm-hmm. true second match. And I, you know, here's the other thing. I think they probably still wouldn't have taken. Him. I think they With still the, would have taken him. Gotcha. Because yeah. you know, Central Michigan wrestled a better schedule. Yeah. And it was like coaches vote at that point, right? Yeah, like it was backroom coaches yeah. stuff. That's literally what it yeah. was. And yeah, I'm heard. I was on a couple. I was on a couple of those. Yeah. So yeah. you've heard, man. You and yeah. you know, and you've been there. And yeah, the C- man, back in the old CAA, I, when I was at Binghamton right in the CAA. So yeah. You know, um, you're and back Nemeth there. lost that year. Nick Nemeth lost in the finals that year. Uh-huh. Uh huh. To a Garino, David Garino from Garino. Buffalo, beat him. Yeah. And it was uh, he shouldn't have lost. They did a video, a back video, backroom video review. Oh boy! He got hosed pretty bad, actually. I was what, what I recall. But Namath was this dude, the, the Dolph Ziggler guy. He was a yeah. uh, uh, he was a uh, hair take my leg and let's roll around guy. He was a funk sure, guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He'd have been giving up a lot of flash twos today. <laughs> yeah, he, if that's still gonna be a thing. Yeah. Yeah, the no reaction time deal. Yeah. The snapshot to he'd be giving up a lot of those today but that was kind of his deal but really good guy an awesome guy but long story short I, you know I just never got the job done at Kent State but it was a different time then the Andresi guy really has changed the culture mm-hmm. um, you know we didn't have 
we were dueling Ashland. We were dealing, dueling West Liberty. We would maybe duel like Michigan State. Um, you had to duel everybody in the MAC then, obviously. Sure. And then beyond, like, you know, dueling Michigan State, you know, we didn't duel Oklahoma. We didn't duel, like, who – and Racy Russell's now, he doesn't hide from anyone. Everybody, yeah. Everybody. Yeah, and it's like we kind of have to now, right? As like a mid-major, yeah. like 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 Stutzman, same thing, right? Like you're going out and you know, like like us when I was at Binghamton wrestling Oki State or or all those schools, like you got to get those those teams on your schedule, or no one's gonna come come there. You know? Yeah, yeah, and um, another thing is like Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, Jimmy really changed it because Frank Romano was uh, um, he was a great Division two coach for for Notre Dame College. Great. Yep. He was almost he would their schedule at Notre Dame college looked like what our schedule was like at Kent state. And for you to get guys in the round of 12 and, and to, uh, you know, win, win, you know, like what Andresi did with Kilgore and my nephew, Ian, they're both three time yeah. all Americans. They had great careers. Sure. They wouldn't have done that under the Frank Romano schedule. Cause they would have been, they'd have got into those tough situations and maybe folded and lost a close match. And yeah. Jimmy didn't do been that. In it. You've been in it. You've been in those fights. You've been in those battles. That's a different experience when you get yeah. at that. Yeah. I mean, Where did it start? Like, who's the first kid? Who's the first kid that kind of breaks through for a Kent State? Is it? Uh, well, I mean, it's Jermail Porter. I had him Porter. on my show. Jermail yeah. Porter was their first All American since mm -hmm. 1986. From Don Horning was the last 1986. Yeah. And Jermail Porter 2009. 2009. Beat, beat Zach Ray in the quarters. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. He beat Zach Ray in the quarters, yeah. and he lost to Ellis in the semifinals, and Ellis won. Yep. And then he did the triple slide. He took sixth, and then he played for the Patriots and the Kansas City uh, sure. Chiefs and stuff. But he's a really good guy, and he runs a gym now. Um, and then after him, you kill Gore and, and – Well, and then Badleon. I think Badleon yeah. – that, that yeah. what's crazy is he beat Ray in the morning. He beat yeah. Ray in the quarters in the morning on that Friday. Uh -huh. And then uh, Bad Leon beat Joey Fio of Oklahoma in the round yeah. of 12 that night. They had two All-Americans in 2000. Two All-Americans, 29 or 09. Yeah. Yeah. 09. And then Nick Bad Leon, I think, is a big – Nick Bad Leon. I would say Nick – I would say, like, co-Nick Bad Leon. And that was Nick Bad Leon's true freshman year, too. Yes. Um, so. The three, I would say, would be Nick Bad Leon – Jermail Porter and uh, Danny Mitch, if the assistant Mitchell, coach now. Mitchell. I was going to mention Mitch yep. too. Yeah. And, he, and he wrestled yeah. for Coach Eric Burnett at Burnett, Burnett Trained. Yep. Burnett Trained, there you go. You got it? Got it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and Illyria. And, I'm going uh, uh, team, team Greco tonight. Team Greco for the Buzakis clan. Oh, nice. Okay. Very yeah. good. Um, uh, but those three guys, there was a guy, Drew Lashway, who lost in the round of 12. Lashway, yeah, sure. He lost in the round of 12 to uh, – Frank Molinaro, geez, man, they had a lot of really good guys. And obviously Kilgore was the guy who really made the program start to look like it was rolling. But, they, yeah, Jim changed it, and he did a really good job. And, man, it's, just, it's really sad to see because I'm hearing, you know, big budget cuts to that athletic department. And they're not, I don't think they're going to yeah. drop the team, but I know they're cutting massive amounts from them and the Olympic sports right now. I think, yeah, everybody's kind of facing that, right? Yeah, uh, and that's the Central Michigan time. thing. The Central Michigan tweet that, that they were applauding. Like, oh, we got an yeah. exemption to go below the minimum sports. And I'm like, I, I feel horrible. like I feel like there are so many schools that are so tone deaf. Um, like, like, they just – that that's obviously, like, something that's aimed at maybe, like, a football, basketball sure. kind of – Sure. audience you know i um, mean yeah. they, they feel like they're giving good news but they're running into some like like obvious like wrestling wise um we're pretty mobilized but man tennis is getting ripped right now men's soccer cross country programs it's a lot of other people feeling our pain right yeah. now at the yeah it's level. the olympic sports scott it's the olympic yeah, sports for sure um, another tone deaf one was cincinnati dropped men's soccer yeah Two days later, Cincinnati did a uh, – they were throwing gear into a locker. Uh -huh. You know, all the – you know, the, the hats they get, the Under Armour socks, the, the yeah. travel outfit, three pair of running shoes, two pair of cleats. Mm -hmm. Two of shoes. Yes, I'll, be it's, it's... I'll be over, buddy. I'll be over. 
yeah. kind of wild, wild west right now. Um, yeah. You know, I was pretty excited. I'm from like Binghamton area, spent a lot of time there. So Elmira College, which is right around the corner from there, um, they just added men's and women's wrestling. So you think that's an athletic program that's on the way up, Division three, and then today they're dropping three sports, right? So add in wrestling, dropping three sports. It's uh, it's it's definitely going to be some interesting navigations going on for for athletic departments. Yeah, and you know, Scott, here's the other thing. Okay. Say okay. hi to coach. Say hi to coach. Hi, coach. What's going on, bud? Great is going. Great is yeah. going. Great is going. You got to teach him it. English lessons, coach. That's okay. Um, no, all the, all the words are there. Okay. Okay, go see mom. I'll be right over. Okay. Why? Oh, because look, look at the hey, look at this Mary Lou Rotten hairdo. I was thinking Bieber, like, thick like thick Justin Bieber. So thick, like my wife's hair. Little Not Bieber look. Forever, dude. Yeah. Give me a kiss. No. All right, go go to mom and I'll be right up. Go no, go to the swing no, set. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> so I want you to think about the okay. precedent that Central Michigan <laughs> sets, Scott. Yeah. When they do that, you got a bunch of other mid majors that are now going to try and emulate them. For sure. Because we know the two things that they all want to win at men's basketball and football. We yeah. know that. And and then, you know, for example, my alma mater, Kent State, they won their first bowl game in, in I want to say school history. Yeah. Right? They beat Utah State. They went six and six and they and they beat Utah State who they shouldn't have beat. So now what's Kent State got the delusions of? They got the delusions that they can win at football. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't win with Nick Saban. They couldn't win with Jack Lambert. Yeah. They, they couldn't win with uh James Harrison and Josh Cribbs, two NFL Hall of Famers on their team. They couldn't yeah. win with Julian Edelman as their quarterback. Yeah. How are they going to, you know what I mean? Like, uh, they're going to, they're, yeah. Uh, I mean, they yeah. couldn't get the all time greatest tight end went to Kent state. The all time greatest NFL tight end played basketball for Kent state. Who's that? Antonio Gates was on the yeah. basketball team when basketball I was. Yeah. Antonio Gates and the Kent state basketball team made the elite eight in like Oh one. Okay. Antonio sure. Gates was at his like fourth school. Because he went, to, I want to say Michigan State originally, but but the greatest tight end in the history of the NFL, you could argue Definitely. otherwise. But the guy with the most touchdowns as a tight end, uh, Antonio Gates went to Kent State and played basketball. Never played it down in football. Yeah, they they don't care though, right? Like athletic directors, athletic uh, departments, they 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 don't care. Um, I think that they're so wrapped up in in, and I've said this before, like. You know, obviously, you don't want to mischaracterize every athletic director, but um, the guy, the guy at Kent State, the guy at Old Dominion, the guy at Central Michigan, they they want that Final Four, they want that bowl appearance because that's going to get them their next job, right? Um, so they're they're resume builders. Um, they they're going to get football on the map at a at a mid major, and that's going to propel them into a position at a at a at a bigger school. So. They're not, they don't have that stick to itiveness. They don't have that longevity plan at that school. So their job is to, hey, can I get a building built? Can I get a team in the, the Elite Eight? Can I get a team to the Sweet 16? Can I get, you know, to a, to, to a bowl game win? Even it's going to be like the, you know, Ray Moore and Flanagan Bowl or, or whatever the hell it is. Um, it's still going to look good. Outback Bowl, Outback Bowl, PlayStation Bowl. Actually, I think I know what the Outback Bowl is, but some of them that I hear now, I'm like, what the hell, like, the, the, what, what does that mean? Like, some of the sponsors for them. So, yeah, it's such big business, and it's so distasteful, um, but it's the reality that we're kind of living in, right? Uh, so, I'm scared. Yeah, Central Michigan, um, yeah. That's, that's frightening, you know? It um, scares me yeah. to death, man, because I'm, I'm a yeah. big supporter of Kent State. You know, I have rental properties there. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to have a 30% enrollment decline. Yeah. Um, they are going back in the fall with in, in person classes, but you know, we have, we had runners on the hook who now are not going back to Kent state. They're in that 30%, right? Gotcha. Yeah. So it's like, we might have an empty house that you, know, then you, then you got to turn around and sell it. Right. I mean, it's just like the economics of it is it's a, it's a nightmare. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it makes me sick to think about it because it directly affects me, and a lot of wrestlers have rented from me. Yep, I'm in the same. I got half the the Wilkes teams renting from me right now. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, and we I haven't heard almost, what, we haven't heard I whether they're coming almost, back. Yet. He rented from me for yeah. all those years. All, every year he was at Kent from his from his transfer from Edinburgh. He moved right from Edinburgh to, into my house. I actually lived with Mike De Palma for like a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know my nephew Ian Kilgore lived at my house. The guy who works for Barstool, Kyle Bauer, lived at my house. I got to tell you a story about him sometime. Yeah. Uh, maybe off camera first, and then we can work it in there. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. It's wild. Right now, the landscape's wild. Um, Scott, I just – yeah, I don't even – and we're worried about things that are economically a part of our lives, but there's there's so much bigger stuff going on right now. Yesterday, I went to uh, Chagrin Falls. I went to – there was a, a Black Lives uh, Matter rally. Mm-hmm. And uh, very peaceful. Yep. And so we didn't see that one on the news. Well, of course, exactly. That's not that doesn't fit the agenda because everybody was like super friendly and nice there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was like I'm saying, there's just so much bigger stuff in our society right now, and and I I I don't even know how to address it, man. Like your Facebook post for me was comforting because I don't know, and it's okay to not know. Yeah. How somebody yeah. feels, but you'll listen, right? The only stance you can have at this point in time, I think that makes sense, is is we're trying to figure this out and uh, keep the dialogue going. Um, and 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 like you said earlier, like just listen, listen. So listen. I don't know if we're gonna we're gonna solve that problem tonight. I so let's let's yeah. stay connected with wrestling after Kent State. So um, you're coming out of school, you're gonna get into education, um, you're gonna teach, but you want to stay connected with the sport. It's been a part of your life since you're a little kid. So how'd you find broadcasting? How'd you find that? Um, how, go Ohio cat. Like how'd that all come to be? Okay. So I, um, well, I met Martin at, in 2007 at the, uh, what used to be university of nationals and, uh, Fila cadet is what it used to be. Akron, Ohio. Akron, right. So, yeah. um, I see this guy, I'm teaching, I'm teaching and coaching at um, Riverside where I'm, where I'm a, 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 an academic coaching teacher, right? Okay. okay. It's like basically I'm trying to help at rest kids. I'm the assistant coach for this guy named Scott Blank. Scott Blank called Andresi looking for if he had anybody available and Jimmy called me and he's like, hey, they're going to almost like help you find a job and they've got this new program they're making and they feel like you'd be good for it, and they need a wrestling coach. I was like, I'm in. Boom. So yeah. um, I went to Riverside High School. It's where I'm at still. And then Jimmy Andersey brought me down, and he was like, hey, let's start a club. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we started the uh, Golden Pride Wrestling Club in, like, 2007, I want to say. And okay. I started running the practices. And um, we got good high school kids there. We were getting all right numbers, you know. 20, 15, 20, 25 kids would show up for practice. It was good. And then um, at Riverside, you know, I, I, uh, I had a guy. He's now I teach with him now. His name's Justin Toth. Really good guy. He's got one leg. He's missing from the, uh, the, the knee down on his one side. His clown name is Mr. Toasty. And Mr. Toasty. They actually met right. him. I like they it. Call yeah. him Toast. They called okay. him Mr. Toasty. But um, that year, Justin Toast's senior year, um was the it was six months after i'd met martin in akron okay and then martin dude i thought martin was on drugs and crazy he's a lunatic yeah out of his mind but martin was like hey i'm gonna come back to ohio and that was so that would have been may he's like hey i want to come back to ohio for the state tournament i am gonna need a place to stay do you think you can help me out i was like yeah absolutely dude but I was like, ah, my phone. I, I like, I like fib to him. I was like, ah, my phone's on the fritz or something. And he's like, well, here's my email. Give me yours. And so he, this guy emails me and he's like, hey, I'm coming back. And it was 2008. It was Justin Toast's senior year, right? Justin Toast wrestled. It's funny. He wrestled. He wrestled uh, Gus Seiko in the semifinals. Okay. And we videoed it. And Gus Seiko's the defense soap guy. I work with yeah. the bad guy. Sure. Yep. And he, uh, he pins Justin Toth, but we're, I videoed it. So we put – and then Martin's like, hey, do you think you can film a set of semifinals or a final? Because a, a there's three divisions in Ohio. Don't get me going. But there we go, yeah. Hey, we just need people 
to video, right? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I got Riverside's club camera Stop. and I started to video the match. Stop. Well, then he was like, uh, well, hey, do you think you can commentate if you want? And I was like, yeah. Well, then my home school, Oak Harbor, my hometown, they had three champs that year in Ohio. Oh, wow. It was okay. Keith Witt and, uh, and uh, who else was it? Uh, Keith Witt won. And then um, so did Cody Magrum, C.J. Magrum, who wrestled for Ohio State. Sure. Yep. Okay. And then um, Kirk Tank, another guy, another guy. Okay. So, um, long story short, I do a whole thing, and then he's like, "Hey, man, you're not bad." He goes, "Do you, do you want to try and do this?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, absolutely." And he's like, "All right, well, I'll give you a call." So at that point, he sends, he starts sending Stop. me all these freestyle events. Stop it, Dad. And I'm like. Yeah, man, I'll video for you. And then within a year, he was like, hey, we're going to get you your own deal. And then Jared Opfer and I, Jared Opfer and I started uh, Go High Okay. So that's where that, it kind of, yeah, Jared Opfer, Stringer kind of, and getting out and and doing that. That's, yeah, I remember, uh, you know, like slow guys sleeping on couches and, and, and you know, doing those coverages of, of schools and stuff like that early on. Those were the, the, the beginnings, the, the, the roots of the, the grassroots kind of stuff. So you were kind of there right at the beginning, huh? Yeah, right in the ground level with him. Um, we went right into it, man. And, he, and I remember when I took him from the, the Akron thing in 2007. Mm-hmm. This yeah. guy's talking. And I'm like, this guy's out of his mind. Yeah. And that's why I didn't want to give him my phone number. I was like, this guy's crazy. He's like, we're going to be bigger than ESPN. He goes, we're going to be bigger than ESPN. We'll rival him. And he was just like, dude, he was like, was like listening to a cult leader almost. Yeah. And, but you know what? Did he get the job done? 100%. Did he do what he said he was going to do? And that, and that, that would be a big thing why I'm a, like a Martin loyalist. You know what I mean? Like, For sure. That dude, he had this vision and he executed it. I was so impressed with it. And, and just how that guy did that, it, it, it was something else. So – we did EWL. I worked yeah. EWL for to 2018. I did EWL, and then there was two years where I it was just me. I went and did two dual meets for each EWL school. I did a campus visit, and then I did the tournament. So I was in tight with all those EWL guys, and Tim Flynn, that From guy. Edinburgh connection. I knew Edinburgh connection was coming soon, right? Tim Flynn was just like. He got it, man. And he was there. They were the first one that Flo had yeah. as a, uh, as an actual, like, Hey, we're going exclusive with these guys. Yeah. And now, now apparently they're going to be back to that, which I hate to see because, you know, obviously I'm a huge Mark Bader fan. Right. Yeah. No, um, it's got to impact the coverage of the big 10, right? Like I know that's going to be on, on the big 10 network, but man, we're not going to get the wrestling junkies not going to get as much content from the big 10 tournament no, you're just no. not you're just not and then they're not going to have any access to uh yeah. well little to no access to penn state obviously yeah exactly. where they had so much access to penn state with that, that big sure. 10 contract and they could put all the matches and they could do the highlights yeah. and whether they were getting interviews or not for penn state didn't really matter sure but the yeah. big thing there is um you know it's devastating to that company and, and, and yeah. the way i was looking at it is if they lose usa wrestling yeah that's it man yeah. that's it it's they're never going to be able to keep the amount of people employed that they have employed because their yeah. big thing was like growth i think throw it at the wall and see if it sticks and then as martin exited with his whole with the yeah. whole board you know getting rid of him um when you have a powerful driven individual like that leave they're now seeing how detrimental that was to their company yeah. and um it's obviously it, it could be the death of them, right? I mean, I yeah, I, mean, I don't want to see them fail. I'm not going to lie to you, Scott. I don't like. Yeah, absolutely. Much absolutely. Of, yeah. There there might be people there that I have disagreements with. I don't want to see Mark Bader, you know, not in wrestling anymore, or or yeah. or, or or you know somebody else, you know, because I don't know how he can go to somebody else at this point. It's like you're in yeah. somewhere so long. I mean, I don't know how you can go somewhere else without having to take a huge pay cut. Working with those guys was amazing. And it was the heyday of when it was, like, very organic what they did. Yeah. No, and, and it, yeah, it was much less it, – it, it was like going to going going to a dead show, right, uh, as opposed yeah, to going organic. to, like, a, 
it's supposed to go into like a Rolling Stones concert, right? Like you're gonna you're yeah. gonna dig in, you're gonna be there, um, and you're gonna get dirty, uh, and you're gonna be there for a while. Um, and you know, like Martin certainly, um, and and Flow Flow Sports. I mean, like they've done more to change the industry than maybe anybody else um, in, in in terms of wrestling, change our sport uh, in the last twenty years maybe more than any other coach has or, or, or anyone like that. So the access that, that we've had to, to our stars, you know, it's been an incredible uh, run for them and, and now it's going to change. Right. And everyone's getting a mulligan right now because there's nothing yeah. to cover. Right. Yeah. But do you, do you continue to hold subscribers right now? Like the content of the, the flow films, like all that stuff is great, but, but when push comes to shove, people want to see streamed wrestling matches. Um, so, so that's going to be, you know, we'll have a few people looking at our long form podcast here that we haven't named yet. But when you're putting that dollar down, it's to to watch wrestling. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how the whole sport evolves. Um, yeah. And, and those guys like your Joe Williamson's, I just can't say enough good stuff about Joe Williamson and, and yeah. Mark Bader. Like right now, even if Mark Bader was like, hey, can we do something with you? Or Mark Bader approached me. You know, that that that's something where I would think about working yeah. with those guys again but like yeah. you know uh, mark bader is just he him and i were joe bailed on here so joe bailed on us in london to meet yeah. his future wife and go hang out with her for two weeks yeah rather than hang out with stinky bader and i so that was joe bader and i really we were for two weeks man it was just him and i just like kicking yeah. every night hanging out and he'd come and stayed with me, you know, five or six times up until that point. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Martin would send him up and I would just hang out with him and we'd go cover stuff. But, but it's wild because uh, we were really connected and just like the guy had my back in, in, in 2012 in, uh, in London. And I, yeah, I just can't say enough things about Mark Bader. And I know that there's criticisms of Mark Bader and I know you've had some and, but I'm like, like how I'm a, how you're a Martin loyalist. I'm a Mark Bader and a Martin loyalist and a Joe Williamson yeah. loyalist because they were yeah. the ones that built that organic thing there that they had. And 100. percent No, like if you got if you want someone that's going to bring energy to your 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 broadcast, if you want someone who's going to just you know you're going to listen to them talk about that wrestling match and know that they are enjoying every single minute of it. Mark Bader's the guy, right? Like, uh, yeah, you know, um, yeah, and they got a lot of guys that you know work real hard. The Mike Melanconico guy who works real hard and, and tries, you know, to he injects a lot of energy into the technique. Yeah, and yeah. obviously, you know, Kyle Bradkey, he's an Ohio University guy, West Virginia's yeah. finest. Great guy. Spay's a good guy. Um, I don't know what they did with the Holmes guy. What a great guy, but I don't know if that guy's on there. But they just, they've got really good guys. The Nomad guy's really super passionate. So those guys are, I mean, they do a really yeah. good job, but I just can't see that that being a sustainable thing, Scott, if yeah. you lose the subs. And then, and then now the guys who you kind of moved away from, you know, mm -hmm. the EWL, MAC guys now, now yeah. they're the ones you have to go after. Some of the high school stuff. The high school stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah, uh, no, it's going to be gonna be interesting to see. Uh, but, it, I mean, regardless of what happens, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan if yeah, you're looking yeah, to, uh, to stream matches and there's, there's some competition in there now. And yeah. you're getting to see really yeah, you got great access to, to our stars and you've got incredible, uh, you know, resources to go and watch matches online. So, you know, they're still going to be a part of that. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, for everything that I get to see. Yeah. I have zero regrets helping them build a fanatical – platform that was a grassroots yeah. movement yeah. i i think fondly of it i love it i'm not gonna yeah. I, you're never gonna hear me tear those guys down i haven't said a negative thing about them yet i don't think if you if you go yeah. back and scrub this back and listen to it i don't yeah. have negative things to say about those guys yeah. and at the end of the day sometimes there's in passes and you got to move another direction that's life yeah. though you know i didn't win a yeah. high school state title i'm the only miller boy still without ohio state title but you know what I think I've done okay. I think I'm all right. I'm going to live, right? I mean, yeah. that, that, that would be, you know, I mean, when you ask me about things that, how did you, you know, like going to Russia in 2009 with yeah. Joe Williamson and just figuring stuff out. Yeah. That guy, the Floriani guy is like a mad genius. But now I like look back and I'm like, I want to punch him in the face for all the actual. What the hell were you thinking? Yeah, the wrist. <laughs> the wrist, man. We were just out there. 
We were just out yeah. there. Yeah. And and to find out that the criminal element basically controls and runs everything in the country is <laughs> terrifying to think back on it. I went to Russia in 1990. Um, so just when it was opening up. Um, I'm in like Moscow and Kiev and, and, and stuff like that. And man, it's like, it's like young guns, right? It's like the wild, wild yeah. west. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, you're like, Oh, we're going to go to the bank and exchange money. And the guy's like, no, you're not. You're going to go to this guy over here and he's going to change your money for you. And yep. I'm like, what's going on here? You know, he's our guy and they're not Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, Joe and I, Joe and I found out, um, the dude, this dude, this American guy rolled up on us and he's like, Hey, there's rules that you got to follow. And he goes, mm -hmm. then there's like, there's rules. Like, right. We rolled up on that. Scott, we filmed 305 matches. Every match in the tournament, we filmed it. Yep. And, um, we went down on the floor and I interviewed Miguel Mamiash Bailey. Yeah. I just rolled up on him and just started talking to him. I think I had a tribe hat on and Indians hat. <laughs> I rolled up on this guy. This other guy, these other two guys are translating for us. And he was actually very friendly to us. Yeah. We had no credentials. And we're there sticking out like sore thumbs. And we filmed 305 matches. And then uh, we interviewed uh, Basak Kudikov. We uh, interviewed Dennis Sargush. Yeah. Pretty awesome experience, though, right? <laughs> and, and, yeah. Yeah. And Joe, Joe saved us so many times, man. Like, he yeah. held us out of the grease so many times because he was there the year before when Martin sent him alone. Why? Well, I mean, if I'm, if I'm Joe, and he actually said it, he's like, I want to punch him in the face sometimes, but I want to hug him and kiss him other times. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can see why. <laughs> Sorry, Goose, like, pull your camera strap at all? or Oh, no camera straps. Didn't anything dirty there? In. Nothing dirty. It was actually – those guys were actually – they were really nice to us. Kudakov was really nice. Kudakov's coach yeah. did an interview. It, it was – that was just – I learned so much from that. And the London yeah. 2012 with Bader and I and connecting with Bader yeah. and all the – you know, I bought a $250 car and did two seasons of EWL stuff and drove the car 40,000 miles in and, and two yep. years. And it just – it's so organic, man. It was such a yeah. – it was such a real experience. And, and, and this guy, this guy who I thought was a dirty bomb with a vision, Martin yeah. Floriani and Flow Wrestling, and, and just how it happened and how he built the – when he got that Big Ten deal, I was like, how did you do this? Right, yeah. How did you do this? And it was – How did you get in front of all those those athletic directors and, 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 and sell them on it? Yeah, that's, that's just, pretty I'm awesome. Gonna take no for an answer. I'm going to yeah. find a way. If we've got to sleep on the floor, we'll sleep on the floor. Mm -hmm. he, when, he, when he stayed with us with that, that, that Justin Toast senior year when I got the camera from Riverside – yeah. He slept underneath our our sink in the bathroom. <laughs> we had the bathroom sink thing and then and then the, the shower and the toilet were a separate deal. But you know yeah. how the, 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 the yeah. vanity will be a se he slept underneath that and That's spent amazing. all night uploading videos, Scott. Yeah. I was like, this guy That's the hardest part of the job though, right? The uploading the videos. Oh, right. uh, yeah. yeah. But it was like name yeah. files and, and updating the site yeah. constantly and, and he guerrilla marketed it so hard and he was handing out flyers and he did, it was so organic to see it happen. And be uh, man, I remember, I remember seeing this website for like the first time and they were doing like some type of rankings and stuff like that. And it was just so much better than anything else that was out there. And they were brand new. And I remember thinking in my head, I think I like even maybe posted on like the mat.com forums. I'm like, man, I hope they never get sick of doing this, man, because this is, this is what we need. They were so like in your face raw uh, not yeah, taking no for an answer getting yeah, content you've yeah. never seen before and he yeah. just like the handheld it, feel the can it's like blair witch project right like uh <laughs> and that day that day i gave him the ride i remember seeing him talking into the camera yeah i was like what's wrong with this guy uh -huh. what's wrong with this guy and now i do it all the time like it's second everyone's day. doing it yeah like everybody they like, you know like yeah. It's they're, they're like so far ahead of themselves time wise because now every kid's got a freaking TikTok and they're yeah. you know like doing yeah. videos with themselves after matches and yep. everyone's uploading a a podcast or their thoughts and this is like man is is, is it twenty years ago like it seems like it that got to be close to it right where when this all started yeah yeah and I was at the ACC this year and there's a guy named Paul Klazak he's a deputy athletic director at Pitt 
And when I did that EWL deal, WVU and Pitt were in the EWL, right? Sure. Yep. But mm-hmm. He was kind of my contact point, right? Uh, yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul Klazak. And I remember I saw him at the, uh, you know, NCAs last year. And then this year was at Peterson Event Center, you know. And I saw him at PPG. I saw him at uh, Peterson Events at ACC this year. And, and I, I said something to him like, hey, do you mind if I get by here? And he's like, you. He goes, you were doing this before it was a thing. Hell yeah, yeah you can get by. And I was like, dude, awesome. thank you so yeah. much. You don't owe me nothing. And yeah. that's, that's the way I look at it, man. When people grant me an interview or want to talk to me, I just – they don't owe me anything. John yeah. Smith doesn't owe me anything. Sure. Kel Sanderson, he, you know, that guy, you know, he, he wants to be left alone. I think that guy's a nice guy. And he yeah. wants to be he wants to he wants to mind his own business. He yeah. wants to win. Yeah. Right? I don't think the guy cares a ton about money. I think the guy yeah. loves winning. He's like he wants to win at Tedley Winks. He wants to win at Uno. He wants to win at mowing the lawn or whacking the weeds or digging a rock up in his yard. I saw he did one time. But yeah. I think the guy wants to be left alone. And I don't think that that guy feels like anybody's entitled. And yeah. for you to think that that guy has to talk to you, like you need to change your mentality. Because Kale Sanderson doesn't need to talk to you. He doesn't owe Zeb Miller a thing. Right? Everybody's going to do it a different way, right? Yeah, and you got to be respectful of that when you're doing it. Like, uh, you know, there are there are high school coaches um, that 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 don't, that don't believe in promoting their programs, right? Or or they're not. And I'm the opposite, right? Like I'm putting it out there, and and hey, you know, we're going to market this, we're going to brand it, uh, but. Not every school feels that way. So they're not right. They're not wrong, you know. And uh, Kale's very different than some of the other coaches. But, man, he's getting it done. And, and that's really? been, and I think that's probably true of a lot of different sports, right? Um, Got to think back to there's probably still guys out there. Remember, uh, I'm going way back now, but uh, Eddie Murray, the guy for the Orioles. Of course. Uh, never spoke to the media, man. Like, it was just like they're never going to do it. Uh, yeah, Marshawn Lynch. Remember, Marshawn I'm, Lynch. Just here so I don't, I don't want, I'm just here so I don't get fined. But yeah. nothing wrong with that. Like, Scott, yeah. you don't owe me anything. You don't have to let me yeah. sit on your bench for the Super Quad to watch you guys beat yeah. St. Ed's 10 matches to four. You don't owe right. me nothing. You yeah. can, hey, dude, skip, kick rocks. Go away. Uh, yeah. Brian Antonelli doesn't have to let me film their warm-up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's sure. a private school. They don't yeah. have to let me in their school. John yeah. Hefferman doesn't have to let me into that Super Quad. Yeah. You know, if John, if I don't have John Heffernan's uh, blessing, you know, and, and Gus Seiko doesn't go to bat for me, whether yeah. you want me there or not, that doesn't mean anything. That's their school. That's a private school. Sure. You know, and I, they don't need to have me on their campus, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm always just grateful, man. I'm just grateful when I can talk to anybody, you know, like we got uh girls wrestling's getting, you know, big in, in Ohio, you know, like yeah. there's this guy named Robert Deerwester. He's got a daughter named Chloe. Whenever they want to talk, I'm pumped. They're great people. Um, any of the people I work with as far as partners, I love working with my partners, and I, I, I'm glad they value me. And I'm glad that you see fit to bring me to, uh, you know, the, the super quad and film stuff and put it on Rockfin and put it everywhere and let everybody see that. But once again, John Smith doesn't owe me anything. Kel Sanderson doesn't owe me anything. Tom Ryan owes me zero. They don't have to. They don't have to that's where, yeah, I think you're right. I think, like, that relationship part of the sport is, is key because we do need that exposure. Right. Um, and, and so maintaining those has been, been a pleasure for me with, with all the people that I work with. And like you said, partnerships, relationships are, are, are super key. Um, so changing gears a little bit here, let's talk defense. soap, man, let's, let's talk about that a little bit because that's a big deal now, you know, we're going to be, approaching some so how'd you get involved with them and uh tell a little bit about that well it brings it back around to jared offer um jared offer and i were business partners all the way up to two years ago we dissolved our business partnership um he runs a nonprofit called oac um ohio athletic committee it is the junior high state championship for the state of ohio uh guy was in with him guy Mm -hmm. and uh built a lot of inroads and then he was like, hey, Guy likes what you do. Guy's got a great product. Maybe you and Guy should start working together. And I was like, no brainer. Yeah. Those people are the fairest people. And the, and they're how Martin treated me, how Martin took care of me. I, I never got stiffed by Martin Floriani. He never not paid me. You know, um, you know, the only time I have never been paid by like a flow sports is a choice I made. 
Yeah. I was like, ah, I'm not going to fill your forms out. I'm good. Right? Like, sure. that's a choice, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you don't invoice someone, how are they going to pay you? Right? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. the same thing with Defense Soap. Just, I'm actually heading out there. He's, he's opening up a wrestling room next week. Is he really? He got two 40, 40 by 40s, one yeah. piece Resolite mats. They're going down and they're putting the wall mats up next week. So, there'll be some content coming out about that. But awesome. guys, say that going to be where's that located? Uh, Vermilion, Ohio. So that's west side. So that'd be west of St. Ed's 40, 40 minutes, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So that's almost, uh, it's in between Cleveland and Oak Harbor, essentially, where I'm from, right? Sure. Yeah. Sandusky, not too far from Sandusky. Sure. Lorraine, yeah. Illyria area, basically. So um, that's west side. We're east side over here. You know, we're, um, we're, uh, Solon's right by us. Uh, east side would be Solon, Cleveland Heights, Beachwood, uh, Warrenville yeah. Heights. That's all over by us. So that we, Cleveland's a uh, good size, two million plus uh, metro area. Some metro, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. It's a good metro area, but um, sprawl. So they are um, Guy Seiko is um, he was an NCAA qualifier for um, yeah. Cleveland State. And John Smith won his weight that year. And he okay. actually got eliminated by the guy who lost to John Smith. Okay. Um, Gus wrestled for UVA and Steve Garland, three-time NCAA qualifier. Um, mm -hmm. Charlie Agazzino is another guy that's with him. Charlie is a Cornell guy. Charlie is a St. Ed's guy. Um, Gus was a two-time state champ for um, St. Ed's. So there's a yep. big St. Ed's connection. Uh, Guy Seiko runs West Shore uh, Wrestling, and then that's okay. a feeder to um, St. Edward, essentially. Yeah. So, um, but they'll train guys and let guys go wherever. They just they like the best guys, I think. Yeah. So those guys, um, Guy Seiko is a retired Cleveland police officer. Okay. So, I'm like, this guy's out in Vermilion now. There's riots in Cleveland. This guy's out here in Vermilion. You know, like, and and and. Think about the, the this guy worked two jobs for 15 years selling soap in, you know, policing East Cleveland. Yeah. And I think he's earned it. I think the guy's earned it, man. And he's just – he's a brutally honest guy. He's never, ever going to tell you anything where he's more than fair. I just yeah, – I can't say enough good things about them. Like, I put him in, like, the Bader category, just, like, good people. Yeah. Good people, and you know, it's like sometimes you get egg on your face, right, Scott? Sometimes people sure. screw you over, do bad stuff, but I just don't feel a, a, they're genuine and honest. And you know what? If he yeah. was like, "Hey, man, it's just we're not, we're it's just we're going in different directions," right? Yep. If he did that, I'd be I'd be fine with that. That once again, I'd be like, "Hey, man, it's been great uh, helping you build a, a fabulous brand." I wash my kids, and, and here's someone asked me, "They're like, hey, is defense soap good stuff?" And I'm like. I wash my kids six to seven days a week with it. I, I don't know what, what more there is to tell you if this is a good product or not. And that's another good thing too. Like Aaron on that ground floor, you know, like we're, we're going to be really with this whole virus thing coming back. It's good like to have that, that, that wrestling community awareness of, of that. Um, I think that's super important for us to, to think about going forward and wrestling people solving wrestling problems is always a good thing. And, so, and that's what guy says. Guy's always like, I yeah. love working with wrestlers. Yeah. Because whenever you need a job done and you want the job done and yeah. you got a wrestler doing it, man, I just, dude, I just don't know who does it better than, yeah. than us. And I know we're, 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 we're pretty high on ourselves. Let's just, you know, <laughs> pretty high on ourselves. We're, we're, we're pretty. Um, yeah. We talked about that last time. Sometimes we get. We do, man. A we're real, like, real yeah. into ourselves and yeah. the badge of honor. Right. And, and why yeah. we dominate MMA, I think. Mm -hmm. is we, we got guys doing 20 plus weigh-ins a year sure yep we got an mma guy who, who's never weighed in yeah they don't know how to deal with weight well i mean turns out you know gus seiko's been doing weigh-ins since he was a six-year-old or seven-year-old yeah the bazakas mm -hmm. have probably been doing weigh-ins since they were seven and eight years old right sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah you get my point like it's yeah. a badge of honor to us and we're really high on it. but i'm honest man that's the thing about me like once again, the superstars don't owe me anything. Jaden Cox does not have to talk to me. Yeah. He doesn't owe me anything. Guy Seiko, Gus Seiko, they don't owe me anything. Scott, you don't have to do a show with me. Yeah. You know, but like, I think you like, I think you like what's going on. I think you're, uh, I think you're
think you like the brutal honesty, right? I mean, who doesn't? For sure. Yeah. Right. No. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Like, we, we we think pretty highly of ourselves, though, right? Yeah. And that's that's what I like about Guy Seiko. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about Schmitty with the corner rugs, or I like about Barbarian Apparel, or Martin Floriani, or Andy yeah. Hamilton, and the fact that people feel comfortable with me to ask them to provide them with what they think is the best content in the business. I mean, that's flattering, man. And and if you have something that is a uh, if you have a talent, don't do it. You don't need to do it for free, right? Yeah. No. You don't need to rip people's faces off, but um, be fair with people, right? Be fair. And that's with what brought us here, right? That's what's got you on on like that, that Martin love and the, the 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 value that you bring is has got us where we're at now with, with Rockman, right? Yeah, man. It's just like be genuine, be you. Don't backstab people. Do the right thing. Um, yeah there's stuff that I'm just not always going to film and put out there. Like, yeah. um, you know what? I saw a video of a guy and I put it on my Instagram of an OU guy. A guy, it wasn't even an OU guy. It was some drunk idiot at Ohio U. Yeah. He touched the high tension wire. It shocked him and he fell 40 feet. <sighs> Compound external fractures to both legs. And I put it on my social media feed. Oh. And I was like, you know what? Cause I thought it was funny. Yeah. But that's something where I was like, no, man, you're better now. Why'd you do that? Yeah. But I'm also a big person who I'm just, I'm not into deleting things. Yeah. It's like, it's probably still there. If you went to find it, you could find it. And yeah. you know what, man? Ask an Adam Kuhn after uh, he loses to, uh, you know, Kyle Snyder in NCAA finals. I asked him, I was like, hey, man, did you do your best? Did, did you give your best effort? How do you feel like you did? Uh -huh. I'll stand by it, man. I've made mistakes, yeah. right? Talking to Imar after uh, he lost to uh, Chenzo the first time. Yeah. I'm like, he was, I was like, yeah, the inside trip, right? And he was like, I don't know, Zub, was it an inside trip? I go, well, you were there. You tell me, <laughs> right? And, 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 but I stand by that, right? And yeah. I don't want Imar, I don't want Isaiah Martinez to think I'm trolling him because I'm not. I have a ton of respect for him. Once again, dude doesn't have to talk to me. Yeah. You know, that doesn't bother me, Scott, when someone's like, hey, man, we're good or no. Yeah. That doesn't bother me. It goes back to I'm the laziest Miller. So I'm like, oh, it's just less work for me. <laughs> I'm the laziest Miller, right? You can get that from anyone you ask in, in my family. Like, oh, yeah, he's lazy. Zeb's a lazy slug. But, um, yeah, man, it's, it's less work for me. And at the end of the day, if you don't feel comfortable telling me your story or, or giving me comments on something, yep. then it's a two-way street. That's okay. I understand. I, you don't owe me anything. I'm not pissed. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna drag your main, name to the mud or say mean stuff about it. It's just it's counterproductive and it's not the right thing to do. Uh, you know, and, I, and I've had some ones where I've got egg on my face, and I'm all right with it. I stand by them. Sure. If you if want you're on social like, media in any way, shape, or form, um, you know, and you're putting content out there, you're going to make mistakes, right? Um, and you're going to have stuff where you're like, oh, you know, and, I, and, and not necessarily even like regret, but, you know, like for me, like sometimes I fail my own test and I'll, I'll, I'll put something up and I'm like, I believe that and I stand by it, but, you know, maybe I didn't need to post it, right? Um, like, like maybe I should have just made that phone call or maybe that should have been a text. So, yeah, that's 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 sometimes a test that that I'll fail um, in in this this whole crazy social media world, or, or even like just conversation wise. You're like, yeah, you know, like maybe it's not that important. Maybe even though you think that's the the absolute truth, or you know, maybe you you really wanted to say something, maybe you didn't need to, right? Um, so that's something that I'm always mindful of, like like you're saying with uh, you know, like oh, maybe maybe I didn't uh ask the right question there or maybe i should have gone a different route with that interview but it is what it is right i mean that's the way it's going to go sometimes we're humans we um, we're yeah. human. we make mistakes yeah. um i you know i take pride that i've never uh hurt a kid with yeah. my interviews i've never you know and, and i'll stand by that and if anybody wanted to say other I'll, I'll i will i will fight that fight that's the hell i do want to die on you know what i mean i i I, that is something where I absolutely feel like I've never put a kid in danger. I don't think I've ever like uh, harmed somebody's uh, mental health as, as right. far as kids, because my biggest thing is I want to protect kids and 
Yep. But but have I done some things? Um, you know, the Colette interview after Chrysler, All American. Yeah. Um, I asked him if he was going to take the pit job. Totally inappropriate time and place for yeah. the question. Sure. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what? The guy doesn't hate me for it. The guy right. doesn't hate me for it. The guy still talks to me. Yep. Once again, Terry Cole, don't know him. He owes me nothing. But yeah. the fact that he doesn't hold that against me, and he and he's like, the guy the, probably was for, forgiving of it, right? And the yeah. Kylie guy who's at uh, uh, Northern Colorado now, yeah, Isla was like, dude, it's the one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made, uh-huh. right? It's like one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made, right? I and 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 um. You know, I asked Imar about the loss of his father, right? Right before yeah. he's going to wrestle my nephew. Yeah. Right? And, and But I was curious about it, and I was like, you know, like, he thought I meant the loss to uh, Nolf that year. Gotcha. Was like, I want, you know, but should was that appropriate time and place to ask Imar about the death of his dad before he's going to wrestle my nephew in the best match of the year and, uh, and say something? Probably not. Probably yeah. not, right? Probably not. But – but we learn, and, and once again, I think that guy would talk to me again. Yeah, you're probably and right. Guy, and that guy's always – he's friendly to me. He, yeah. That guy hated my guts and wanted to smash my face. He can just do that, right? Yeah. Probably not going to be able to stop him. But a guy like that gets it, and they respect, and they see the passion, and they see the diligence that you put into, you know, watching the sport, learning the sport. Um, I want to say Tom Brands – Um. There's some of those ones where Tom Brands, like I got some of those that are cringeworthy, but it's not cringeworthy because of me. I'm the yeah. only one firing the questions at the guy. Sure. None of those other people in the media want to ask him hard questions. Right. Um, I think he thinks I didn't watch a match one time. Mm-hmm. And it was the Gilman Cruz match. And yep. I was asking him about the management of the match. And I feel like, he thinks I just sat in the back corner and wanted to pounce on him because he lost. And I, I'm, I'm not, dude, I'm not there to yeah. you know, step on anybody's cape. I'm not there to do that. It's not, I, I'm not there to be counterproductive, Scott. We're yeah. there to like, hey, help me. I, you know, I'm not like, uh, if you watch any of the press secretary briefings or anything at the White House, I'm not there. I'm not the enemy of those coaches. Yeah. It's not my deal, man. And, yeah, well, we're not we're not that adversarial yet, right? <laughs> like nobody's nobody's headed down that path. <laughs> no, right? But it's it's just wild to think that we do have some of that, and like people want to do gotcha to those guys, and yeah. I don't want to gotcha any of those guys. I'm a wrestling guy. I want to build wrestling up. I want to help it. I want us to be a big boy sport, though, too. You know, yeah. Willie said it before. You say something bad about Ohio <laughs> State. You say something bad about Penn State, Iowa, whoever me, Iowa State. Virginia Tech, whatever it is, and those guys, they're they we get like our feelings hurt a little bit, and yeah. that thumbs me out of it. Do you know what I'm talking about? I sure do. Yeah, no, no, I mean, I like like there's there's things that people ask or or say or like fans will say and and stuff like that that you know like we wouldn't even ruffle a feather for a, a SEC football coach or a, a, a big time, and and we kind of like say like hey, we want to step into being a major sport, but we don't want to take major sport criticism or we don't want to do major sport things. So, you know, the, 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 that, that cutting off access that, Hey, we're not going to deal with that uh, person. That's going to slow that progress towards, towards being that, that, that non niche kind of sport that, that we kind of are. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, I don't know how else to say it, but yeah. um, you know, if Kevin Dresser, I don't mind asking Kevin Dresser about juice in the system this year. I don't mind that. And I think Kevin Dresser knows that I'm not out to get Kevin Dresser. Yeah. I think that he would address that question. Yeah. There was a pitcher. There was a pitcher for the Mets a couple years ago. uh, Yoshi. Remember Yoshi? Yeah. Um, And they said uh, he was going to, he was worried he was going to get cut. And they're like, what are you going to do when you get, if you get cut? He's like, I'm going to buy a ticket. I'm going to go sit out in the right field bleachers and I'm going to yell horrible things about the manager you know, and the pitching coach. And I'm like, yeah, like, exactly. Right. Like he's like switching over from the insider to outsider. And, but, but we need people, I need people to be like posting on Twitter, like the, the, the horrible lineup decision that I made, you know, or, or something like that, or just saying bad stuff about me because that's part of growth as a sport, you know, like I want that. We, we need, we, 
God, I'm going to sound terrible as a almost 50 year old guy saying this, but we, we need the haters, right? <laughs> because oh Nobody's a bigger I, hater or a critic of me than me. Yeah. Uh, no, but, but when but, I do something wrong or I don't know something, I'm like, you can ask my wife. She's uh -huh. like, you got to stop yelling at yourself. Be better, Zab. You know, like, yeah. but I want to be better at stuff. I want to be better. Like I, I, I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I'm not afraid yeah. to be wrong, but I'm going to give you the best I have with the information that I have. Yeah. And you if there's people out there that are saying, man, Zeb sucks, that's, you, you, you made it. You made it, right? Like, like people are out there talking about how horrible a baseball announcer Joe Morgan was or they hate Chris Collinsworth. Or, but those guys are, are involved in big-time sports. And, yeah, like it, it's a luxury to be able to hate a guy like Skip Bayless or, or, or someone like that because that means they've made it. And, and, and we need a little more of that in our community too. Yeah, I mean – we want to be a big boy sport. We got to start addressing big boy questions and we have to, uh, a big girl sport too, right? Cause we, we have sure. yeah. a very strong, uh, team, yeah. U.S. national team, mm -hmm. uh, heading into the cycle for 2021, right? We don't even know what 2020 is going to be, right? Yeah. If that um, all lines up, man, it's going to be got a great team. I think yeah. that, but you know, like once again, I think that they fall into wrestling, you know, they're, they're newer in the last 20, 25 years, right? But they, I think some of them get their feelings hurt too. And, and you know, I, I'm not calling anybody out, right? Have I called anybody yeah. out, right? But right. I just use Kevin Dresser as an example, right? Like, sure. yeah. But I think Kevin Dresser, for what they're paying him, I think he's willing to answer tough questions. Yeah. 20.1 yeah. million over seven years. Dude, you're making over 300K. I mean, for Zab Miller to throw a couple questions at you that, that might be critical of you and your coaching style, I think he gets that. I think Sean Bormack gets that. I think, I think those guys get that if they're in the Big Ten. Like, yeah, you know, once again, Coach Kale, Coach Kale does what Coach Kale wants to do. His record kind of allows him to do as such, though. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna stand by their decisions. Then I think yeah. it's okay. You know, they get, that's that's part of that job for sure is is being accountable to to your fan base and and yeah. maybe it plays a little bit of role in in being an intermediary between those two yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, and I think those guys are really good guys. Like, what I will say about the Penn State guys is, I think they're really good guys. Yeah, for sure. Cunningham's a really good guy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and they're not going to be the guys that are going to sit down and have a beer with you because they don't drink. Right? Beer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but they're guys that are going to do the right thing by your kid if, if, you're, if your kid's there and he's the best guy or – those guys are, you know, those guys are good manners. They're good men. They're good people. Hundred percent. Probably one of the better staffs to work with through yeah. the recruiting process mm -hmm. and the nope. way that they treat the, the the student athletes and things like that. I'm very, very impressed with with. And obviously, they got a great product to to, to bring to the yeah. table. But yeah, they're 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 not the type to put pressure on kids. Um, they're not they're not playing those types of games. No. Um, so nothing but respect for them. Yeah, and, and how they want to handle the media, that is their choice, you know. Sure. And, and you know, but then here's the other guy. You got the opposite with the Ohio State guys. The Ohio yeah. State guys are going to give you – Jay Jagger is going to give you everything. Yeah. Jay Jagger is going to let you film all his technique. He's yeah. going to let you post it. You know, I know that because he let me do it last summer. We did a 20-minute interview, a couple interviews. The guy – he Jay Jaggers doesn't owe me a thing. He doesn't yeah. have to let me do that. You know, Tom Ryan doesn't have to take everybody through the facility like he does. Yeah. Terrell doesn't have to come on my – Terrell did an interview from Ottawa, dude. He did an yeah. interview with me from Ottawa, and he laid on a couch the whole time. I will say that about him. Yeah. But I'm, a, I'm the, one of the biggest Terrell fans there is, man. But, like, those guys, once again, they don't – they go above and beyond. They go yeah, above 100%. and beyond. They 100%. go above and beyond. And, and, and Tom Ryan, you know, he told me about the NFL films with Steve yeah. Stable and how NFL films changed the NFL. Yep. That's what he's trying to do. And that's the model that that guy's following. And he gets it. And you know what? Nothing but respect for those guys. And however people want to do it, however Brian yeah. Snyder wants to talk to me or Manning or, or Storniolo yeah. or Bono reader, all the, those people have all been great to me. Chirella. I've never had any of those guys treat me with disrespect. And once again, they don't have to let me into Michigan's room over Christmas break and let me film the whole practice. They don't have to do that. But Sean Barnett, he has some trust in me, and I'll take it. I'll take it. You know what I mean? There's room, there's room for all types of styles, for sure. Agreed, Scott. Uh, hey, I am uh, I'm running on empty here. Yeah, no, 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 no. You got to get it back there to those s'mores, right? 
Yeah, um, I'm running on empty. I'm at six percent, five percent battery now. No, no, no. So we we did we covered a lot of ground tonight, though. We did a good job. So I think next we got to kind of figure out where we're going with this. We've done a extensive backstory on each of us. Uh, hopefully, we have a few people listening. Um, so now we gotta get 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 forming this. Start molding that clay, and and uh, maybe we'll bring some guests on. Sometimes we'll we'll, we'll 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 throw some topics out there. But I'm excited about where this is gonna go. Scott Green, it is always awesome to talk to you. I'm gonna go in, plug this computer in, start a fire for my kids, and cook some s'mores, hang out, and drink some summer shanty. All right? Love it, love it. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, enjoy your evening, and uh, we're gonna get back on this next week, and 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 keep pushing this rock up the hill. All right? Yeah, Scott, thanks for letting me tell my story tonight, man. I appreciate it. All right, it. I appreciate it. I think I appreciate you telling it. Okay. All right, man. Have a good one. All right, take care, Zeb. Bye.